Hi, welcome to the University Bookstore. How can I help you? Oh, you need to get books for the semester? Yeah, all our books are in the back now. We get them all for you. You just Do you have a class list from the registrar? All right, let me see that. Okay. Wow, that's quite a class load. Hmm. All right, I'll go get all your books, and I'll be right back to check you out. Oh, what's that? Yeah, we can scan any other items that you have from the university store besides just the textbooks, so you can check that out here too. I'll be right back. You want me to go over your books with you? Okay. So the first book you needed is University Physics for Physics 101 that you'll be taking. I actually took this class. It's pretty time consuming. There's a lot to learn. But this is a really good book for the class. As you go through it, you'll notice it's written really clearly. It goes into a lot of detail and good explanations really good diagrams for all the problems. And you'll notice any formulas or equations you need are highlighted throughout the text. And then when you get to the back of a section, they will all have explanations for the equations and then any uh, diagrams or graphs that are helpful to understand it or in using it. Um, just, who do you have? I didn't look at your instructor. Oh yeah, that's who I had. Just to make sure you go to all the lab sections. There, uh, really put all the class material into a real world. Helps concrete it, and it's a good place to get extra help from the instructor. He teaches the labs himself. He doesn't have a TA that does it. TAs just grade the homework. Yeah, it's kind of expensive. It's, we don't have any used ones right now, so this is the only one we got. It's $220, but you need it for the class. I'll put it in your card over there. Now this one, this is, isn't required for the class. This is Cliff Notes for Physics. We just offer it. A lot of students have said it's very helpful. Even though the other book is really clear and concise, this just gives you different examples to look at, presents the material in a different way, and as you can see, it's all boiled down. It's a cliff's note, so it gets right to the quick of things. And uh, both the other physics book and this one will take you through Physics 101 and Physics 201. The only problem with this book is that it doesn't have any of the the modern physics. It just goes through optics and uh, electrostatics, capacitors and stuff. So if, if you need help with those things, you'll have to find an outside resource. But this this book actually really got me through the class. So I highly recommend it. It's only ten dollars. Did you want to get it now? No. Okay, well, you know, if you change your mind at any time, of course, you can come back. Well, what's the next class you have? Okay. So the next book I'll check out is uh, Linear, Linear Algebra. And this is, uh, this goes into matrix operations mostly. Yeah, it's really important class for, uh, for if you get
get into using computer programs to solve engineering problems. If you didn't have a problem with college algebra, this should be a pretty straightforward class. You might have a little trouble towards the end when it gets into vectors, but since you're taking physics one at the same time, you'll already have covered that and it might not be a problem for you. Yeah, the university also has tutors available for this class too, so if you get in a bind, don't wait to get help. It's available. All right, the next one, calculus. I saw you're going to be taking calc 2, so yeah, unfortunately, the college doesn't use the same book for the entire calculus sequence. But this is the same book you'll use for Calculus 3 as well. No, no, you'll have to get a, a whole separate book for differential equations. So. But it's just a typical math book. So, yeah. Just time consuming working through all the problems. There's tutors available for this, of course, as well. Alright, next is project economics and decision analysis. This is the first part of the series. I didn't take the second part. I actually took this class though. Yeah, you don't use statistics. These are all deterministic models. It's a pretty straightforward class. It's really important for an engineer wanting to do more than just design you want to do project evaluations and stuff project planning you know this is a used book it's a good deal you can see some of it's already been highlighted there yeah it just teaches you how to figure out costs by using interest rates timelines and taxes yeah yeah this book's geared towards uh, uh, the oil field industry so oh you're doing petroleum engineering okay I didn't see that on your chart there yeah that's the same program I did it's that's why you have all the same books that I've already used I guess and then last, we've got these three books that you need for your English 101. Yeah, I took the same instructor too. It's really weird. So the first one here is A River Runs Through It by Norman MacLean. It's got other stories in it too that are good to read, but for the class, you just read A River Runs Through It. Yeah, yeah, I saw the movie too. The book is so much better. Really gives you gives you the author's uh, internal monologues, what he's thinking, what he's feeling, things that are hard to get with a movie. Yeah, I recommend reading the other stories too if you like to read. Oh yeah, yeah. This one we had to use one for you. You know, we saw you had checked used and if, if available, so. So the next one for English 101 you need is called The Best American Short Stories. And this is the 1999 edition. So your instructor is saving you a lot of money by having you read old stories, which nothing wrong. But yeah, the English stories don't change too much. So. Yeah, you don't have to read all of the stories in here. You'll read a few, and they might change semester to semester, but... Interpreter of Maladies by Jhumpa Lahiri is probably my favorite story that I read in here. Yep, yep, this one's only $12, so... And I think we buy these back for a pretty good portion of what you paid normally. And yeah, it's a good bookstore for... Not ripping you off like the other ones. So the last thing you need for English 101 is the brief Arlington Reader. K. 
canons and contexts. Yeah. It's got stories and essays in it. It's also an older book. This one's only $8 for the used. So, this one's seen better days, but all the words are still in here. So. Yeah, yeah, you won't read all the stories in this one either, but my favorite definitely is uh, George Orwell's On Killing an Elephant, or, sorry, On Shooting an Elephant, I think is the name of that. Yeah, it's about his time in India growing up as a young adult. So that's all your books. You said you had some other things you wanted to check out from here. Okay. All right. Yeah, a highlighter. Definitely very important in the engineering curriculum. Marking all those important equations and ideas. Oh wow, that's a lot of Sharpies. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you color code your notes too. Okay, yeah, I have a lot of different colored markers too. Really, really helps you find what you were looking for. Also helps if you date your notes. So you know when you're looking for. What else do you have? Oh, an engineering ruler. Yeah, these these are really nice to have when you're drawing stuff to solve problems. This one's nice. It has ten tenths of a foot as well as instead, instead of just inches. That can be important in the civil world. So you're gonna get a new calculator too. Huh? Oh wow. TI-89 titanium. Yeah, this is what I have too. I started with just the TI-84, but this one's really useful because you can solve equations with it a lot more easily, and it can store a lot more information. You can upload more programs for it. Alright, what's next? Oh, just a pencil. Yeah, you can never have too many mechanical pencils. I try to have three with me whenever I'm taking a test, just in case. White out. Super important when you're taking notes and you make mistakes or whatever. Since you're going to be using pens and, and markers to take notes. Finch binder in white. Okay. And a one inch binder. In blue. Yeah, these are really nice ones. I use them to store all my notes too. Yeah, I don't use notebooks either. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is this is a really good paper. It's got reinforced edges, so it doesn't tear out of the binder. You'll be back for a lot more of that, I think. And one last thing. Okay. Yep. Oh, a disc. Yeah. Yeah, you really need to uh, keep all your files saved, especially when you get into later courses. You'll be writing a lot of reports. You have lots of Excel files. Yeah, this stores 1.44 megabytes. It's one of the newer, super dense storage devices. So uh, yeah, these are kind of expensive, but definitely worth it because you'll only need one. Okay. Any other questions or anything else you wanted to buy? Okay. Well, let me get it all added up real quick. Yeah, yeah, books are, they just keep getting more and more expensive. But. At least this bookstore gives a really good buyback price to you. Unless the instructor's changing it. Okay. Alright, 25 cents. 
Alright, your total is going to be $522.33. Oh. oh, you have financial aid? Okay. Um, what was your student number? All right, yep, yep, it's all ready to go. Just do that. And do you want an emailed receipt or do you want a paper one? Email? All right, sounds good. Well, good luck this semester, and uh, we'll see you next semester when you come back for more books. Good luck.